Hey everyone, Jake here. Super excited to be here today with you. I want to share with you about the HDB's option to purchase, which is an important piece of document pertaining to the purchase and sale of HDB flats. Now, there are a few important clauses of the OTP which I will highlight to you today, and I want you to be aware of them when you enter into an OTP as a buyer or as a seller. This will be a part of a new video series that I will be doing. My purpose is to provide you with clarity and confidence for you to achieve success in your own real estate journey. Now, without further ado, come join me and let's dive right in. Today, what I'm going to cover is about the HDB option to purchase. And I promise you that there will be some good takeaways. So let's go. The OTP is an integral part of the HDB conveyancing process. And my session today will highlight a few often overlooked areas which can be a potential deal breaker for buyers and sellers if they are not managed well. Now, I would assume that you know what an OTP is, but if you are new to the property market here in Singapore, please feel free to contact me and I shall be happy to run you through. Now, the OTP has two parts. The first section contains 16 clauses spanning five pages and it also includes a number of do's and don'ts which HDB has specified sellers and buyers that you need to take note of. So it might look a little bit intimidating at first, right? So many clauses, so many terms and conditions, but not to worry, your salesperson is there to help guide you and explain to you all the important clauses that will affect you. And the second part of the OTP is the actual OTP contract itself. This part is where the buyer and the seller will complete their details such as their name, their NRIC, the property address, the agreed selling price, and so on. And on page 8 is where the buyer and the seller will sign off. And after signing off, the OTP will become a legally binding contract. Now, this slide will give you a quick summary of what the OTP is about. Firstly, it is a legal document pertaining to the buying and the selling of HDB flats. The OTP is issued by the seller to the buyer in exchange for an option fee. The option fee is typically $1,000. However, it can be any amount mutually agreed upon between both parties. And of course, every contract needs to have consideration. So in this case, the consideration is the option fee, thereby forming a legal binding contract. This is a very important point. The OTP is valid for 21 calendar days from the date it is issued by the seller. What this means is that if the buyer does not exercise the OTP after 21 calendar days, the OTP will be void and both parties will no longer have any claims against one another. The OTP will expire at 4 p.m. on the 21st calendar day, meaning if it's not exercised, the OTP is void and will lapse. Now, the buyer can choose to forfeit the option fee and allow the OTP to lapse without exercising it. However, once the buyer exercises the OTP, a legal binding contract will be formed and no party is allowed to back out from it without facing consequences or penalties. The format of the OTP that is used must be the format prescribed by HDB. Agents, sellers, please take note you are not allowed to use any other format of OTP. You are not allowed to use your own format of OTP. You are also not allowed to use the format prescribed by your respective agency. Let's move on to seven areas that are often overlooked when dealing with an option to purchase. Sellers, you must register your intent to sell in the HDB resale portal at least seven days before you can grant an OTP to your buyer. This is very important to take note because I've come across a few cases actually. Uh, recently, uh, there is a case that I handed for a buyer. When I asked the agent 
when I ask the seller's agent to provide me with a copy of intent to sell because sometimes I just want to double check yeah and I saw that the date on the intent to sell was actually two days before the day that the seller issued us an option to purchase so because of this we have to redo everything the OTP has to be reissued again after the seven days has lapsed buyers if you are taking a HDB loan you must right I emphasize again you must have a valid HLE before you can be granted an OTP but if you are taking a bank loan you can proceed to place an option fee and be granted an OTP however you must have your bank letter of offer ready before you exercise the option to purchase within the 21 calendar days validity period the buyer has 21 days to exercise the option to purchase from the date of its issuance so during this period the seller is not allowed to issue another OTP on the same property to another buyer okay but the buyer can place an option fee for another unit and the buyer can receive the option to purchase for another unit now why is this so why why does some buyers place option fees for two units for example well sometimes the buyer is not confident that the valuation can match the agreed selling price so therefore to hedge against this risk they place an option fee for two units so as to increase the chances of the valuation matching the agreed selling price for at least one of the units now having said that this seldom occurs I think I've only seen like one or two occasions where the buyer actually went ahead and placed an option fee for a second unit that they like so but then again it is something that you know um, buyers you can take note of let's move on to section 6.1 of the option to purchase in this section you will find a clause in bold saying that the option fee and the option exercise fee must not exceed five thousand dollars now the market practice is this the option fee is typically one thousand dollars and the option exercise fee is four thousand dollars so in total $5,000 will be payable by the buyer to the seller up to the point of the exercise of the option to purchase but in reality the fact is that the option fee need not be $1,000 it can be any amount in fact it can be $100 or $200 so long as both parties the seller and the buyer mutually agrees right it need not be $1,000 let me repeat again and same thing for the option exercise fee it can also be any amount right it can be eight hundred dollars one thousand dollars but there is no rule saying that the option fee must be one thousand the exercise fee must be four thousand dollars okay so please take note buyers and sellers out there next let's come to section 12 of the option to purchase this section pertains to the resale application submission timeline the seller and the buyer both have to mutually agree on when to submit the respective resale application via the HDB resale portal. Now, usually the agent will put 20 to 30 calendar days after the OTP has been exercised. Nevertheless, this is not a hard set timeline and it can be extended mutually between both parties. My usual practice is this as much as I can I will try to submit my resale application in the same month as the OTP exercise date now this is something to do with HDB's ethnic quota assessment every month HDB will assess the ethnic quota for different estates and different blocks so it may change from month to month so let's assume that I re represent a Malay couple and the OTP was exercised in the month of February where Malay is eligible to purchase that particular unit now if in the month of March the ethnic quota changes then I may have a problem here 
So as much as possible, buyers and sellers, agents likewise, as much as you can, this is something for you guys to take note of. Okay, everyone stay with me. Right, well done. We have come to section 14.6 of the option to purchase. This section pertains to the refund of CPF monies. For sellers, this is a very important section which I want you guys to take note of. Any CPF funds that you've used from your ordinary account to pay for your house, ultimately when you sell off your house, all the CPF funds used plus the accrued interest over the years, they will be refunded back to your CPF ordinary account. Now, if you have owned the house for say 15 to 20 years, you might not realize this, but the amount is actually very substantial and they may even exceed the sale value of your property. So we call this ne a negative sale. In the event of a negative sale, HDB, if so requires, seller, you must top up any shortfall back to your CPF ordinary account in cash. Now the saving grace is this, HDB does consider a few cases on a case-by-case -case basis. I've handled a few cases before and managed successfully to get the shortfall waived off, fortunately, for the seller. So if you run into any such problems or if you foresee yourself ending up with a negative sale in the purchase, in the sale of your property, right, just feel free to, to contact me. All right. All right. We've come to the last point for today's tutorial. Section 20.2 pertains to final flat inspection. To the buyers, in case you're not aware, you have the right to conduct a final inspection of the flat you purchased before the completion date. And I realize this, uh, many are not aware uh, of this right uh, or they simply not bother about this. But I would definitely recommend you to do a final inspection on your own to give yourself peace of mind and also to avoid any misunderstanding between yourself, your agent and the seller. Now, if you really have no time to do a final inspection on your own, right? not to worry because HDB, they will also conduct a final inspection for unauthorized works, if any, in the property. Okay, I've come to the end of my tutorial. If you are still with me, thank you so much for your patience. Now, if you'd like to see more content like this, please hit the like or subscribe button below so that I know. And if you think my video can help you or someone that you know be it a friend or family members, please share my video with them. And I'll see you next time. Ciao!